<clears throat> What's up, guys? Don't know if anybody's out there. Hey guys, how's it going? Can you hear me? Taylor? <laughs> Can you hear me? Just give me a yes or a no. I'm gonna give, uh, I'm gonna give it a minute or two to uh, get some more people on here and then we're gonna get going. Uh, welcome to the Instagram Live. I hope you guys have been having a lot of fun with the um, uh, jumpstart camp and uh, you've learned a lot. It was great to be uh, your chief counselor this week, but I know you guys have had some pretty awesome ones as well. So um, that is great. All right. I'm just getting myself organized here. There we go. Maybe not with the window completely in the, in the background. So what I thought we'd do is we'd have some fun today and I would take some questions from you guys and then I will talk a little bit about uh, like prep oh there we go um, okay so along the way as we chat today for a bit uh, I thought we'd talk a little bit about hockey of course because that's what the camp was about about how you prepare for a game maybe I'll give you guys a little bit of idea of what I did and uh, about some of my favorite pump up music and then you guys can ask me questions so all along the way if you have a question throw it in and I can show you some exercises too because I'm in my gym here in the basement so here's my gym Broop. Broop. I got some just pretty basic stuff but it's not too bad uh, one of the things that I promised myself when I retired from hockey um, is uh, that I would always stay fit and I would always try to get lots of sleep when I went into medicine. So trying to do those things. But when I was playing, uh, some of the things that I used to do for uh, my preparation before the game was uh, I would always work at, uh, warm up 45 minutes before the game and I would do a variety of exercises that would get my heart rate up. So I'd probably like spend the first 10 minutes running, jogging or biking, maybe skipping. And then I would do like a dynamic warm up, which I think some of you guys have been taught this week through the hockey stuff. And, uh, and then, um, what else would I do? Um, I would always stick handle. So I got my stick here too, um, which I'll show you guys my hockey stick that I used to use over here in the corner, a little ball, stick and a ball. Uh, so I would stick handle against the wall and then I would put my equipment on and I'd always put my gear on the same way every time, which is kind of funny, but I would, people say, are you superstitious? And the answer was no, except I realized I was a little bit superstitious because I would always get uh, a pair of the same way every time. So there we go, here's my stick. So see that curve? Ooh, that's a pretty big curve. Yeah, it's a hook. I put more curve on my stick because Derek Flurry said to me once, you're getting old, you need more curve to get the puck up. No, so this was a hybrid of a stick that Alexander Ovechkin gave me and a stick that uh, I made for myself with like a bit of a mid curve. So I decided to make my own curve, which is a bit straight. I like Jason Spetz's curve too. His is kind of straight and it has like a little hook on the end. So that's kind of like mine. So that's my stick. And I think it's important to have a stick that you feel comfortable with. Mine's about this high without skates. So can you see that? Up to my eyebrow. So I actually played with a bit of a short stick, but this one's a little longer than normal. And uh, yeah, so then the mu my favorite uh, my favorite song I'd always listen to was "Lose Yourself" by Eminem. So I'd like to hear what your guys' favorite song was. Then I would close my eyes and I would visualize myself playing the game maybe a couple hours before, and then I would go out and I would play, and I would try not to think too much. I would just try to like be in the moment, play not overthink situations. So that's kind of the way I used to prepare. Um, so I want to say hi to Rebecca Sandefort, waving at you. 
and Jonah Slilo 14 I'm gonna ask you to just type your question in and I'll answer answer it for you for sure and if anybody else have have any questions uh, Bronte yes you Ooh, my favorite pregame snack my favorite pregame snack would be uh, hmm. Like almond butter and a banana, maybe? I don't know. Does that sound good? Maybe not to some of you, but that was definitely my favorite pregame snack at the rink, maybe. Um, almond butter and a banana. Um, otherwise, like blueberries, maybe like a protein bar, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. How about you, Bronte 8BW9? <laughs> what was your snack? What do you like? I'm curious what you guys would like to know from me uh, over the next 20 minutes or so. And um, uh, I definitely can show you guys a couple of exercises um, while, I, uh, while I wait for questions. I'm going to show you guys my machine here. This is called a Kaiser machine, okay? And you guys can crackers and cheese. Yeah, that's a good choice too. I think it's always good to have a balanced snack. So, all right. This is my Kaiser machine. It's a very fancy thing. But this fancy machine, the things I can do in this fancy machine, I can also do, just give me a second here, with a simple band like this. But you can buy these kinds of bands at online or Canadian Tire. Anyway, you can just hook it up to a fancy machine like this. So some of the things I used to do would be like grab this with resistance and do like low skater walks, or I go backwards and do walkouts like that. You can do the same thing with a band like this that's stretchy. Hook it around anything. And look at this, you can walk out to your tension and then you can do low skater walks. You can also go backwards like this. Or I could do some jumping. Back and forth. Side, the other side, make sure you do both sides always. Back. So those are some cool band exercises that I have on my fancy Kaiser machine here. But you don't need a fancy Kaiser machine to do any of these exercises. Uh, Timmer J75, nicest player I ever played against. Oh my gosh, no one has ever asked me that. Well, truthfully, I didn't take a lot of time to get to know my opponents. <laughs> I wasn't too interested in their lives. Uh, I was pretty competitive, and uh, you know it's just the way it is at the high levels. However. I've gotten, to, I knew Cammy Granado. Cammy Granado was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. She was a captain of the American team for a long time. And when I was 12 years old, I went to a hockey school in BC. Cammy Granado was a guest instructor. And she was so nice. And she really inspired me um, to want to do good in hockey and to play against her someday. And so she's probably the nicest player of an opposition, uh, opponent's team that I've ever played against. Yeah. Uh... Who gave me the best on-ice advice? Well, the best on-ice advice, oh, I've gotten so much through the years. I think Daryl Sutter. Daryl Sutter was the, is something he said a long time ago that always resonated with me, um, NHL coach for a long time. He said, you know, hockey's like a roller coaster. There's lots of highs and there's lots of lows, and you never want to get on either. You kind of just want to stay even keeled in the middle. And then I remember Mark Messier talking about how he played the game to where emotionally, if someone looked at him and they had just walked in the rink and didn't know the score of the game, that they would not know if they, he was winning or losing because he was completely steady no matter what happened. So not being a slave to your emotions, being so high or so low when things go right or wrong. And so I, I wasn't very good at that early in my career, but later in my career, I think I was more of like a warrior that way where if you just turned on the TV, you looked at me, you wouldn't know... Uh, how things were going. I think it's always better to be more positive than negative, that's for sure, but you have to stay pretty even keel and be pretty disciplined in the game of hockey because there's lots of highs and lows and lots of things happen in hockey that you can't really control. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys another exercise in the meantime. I think you can see this. There's my squat rack. It's just a basic squat rack, but you can go on a playground. You can do this anywhere. So a couple of the mainstays that I like um, or chin ups. So you can do just a straight chin up, but to not cheat, start from the ground and see if you can pull yourself up. 
and then maybe you can try to like shift side to side, that kind of thing. So chin-ups are really great for whole body strength. And again, you don't need a gym, you just need something to hang off of. And um, I think I can do about 20, 20 full hanging chin-ups. So I um, challenge you guys to see how many you can do. Full hang, arms straight down, all the way up. I think you could probably do more than that, especially if you're super light. The heavier you are, the harder, the harder it is for sure. And then um, a couple of the other things that I like for exercises, I really like to do some kettlebell stuff. But you don't need a kettlebell either, you just need kind of a weight or something that works. And so something like this, kettlebell swing. So bring it under, swing it. This is really good for your hip activation. So I like that one. That's a good one. And the other thing I like to do is dumbbells in my hand, just lunges, stuff like that. So these are all things you don't need a gym like I have to do. You can do them pretty much anywhere you want. Hi, Alia Zizi. Alia, I don't know. Sorry how to say your name, but how's it going there? <laughs> I'm just checking out your uh, other questions you may have for me. Um, favorite place, Tater. Favorite place I've ever traveled to for hockey. Oh, let's see. Hmm, I always love going to Sweden. I think Sweden was an amazing country, Sweden and Finland. Uh, but probably Switzerland. There's a place in Switzerland called Zuckville that we went years ago. I really, really loved. It was beautiful in the mountains and in the Alps. And they actually had this outdoor skating rink outside of the indoor one. And uh, I always thought Switzerland was um, one of the most magical countries to play hockey in. So definitely one of my favorite places for sure. Uh, now, I played softball in the Summer Olympics. I went to way cooler, more exotic places <laughs> with softball, like um, Cuba and in the Summer Olympics. I went to Brazil, uh, went down to the Caribbean. So places like that to Sydney, Australia to play. So really sport has given me everything that I have in my life. And I wanted to say to you guys too, that uh, I came from a really small town and my mom and dad, we didn't have a lot of money. Um, they were teachers, they made a pretty good living, a decent living, but we never took fancy trips and we never had extra money to go to hockey games. I didn't go to a NHL game till I was 18 years old. And uh, you know, I, I guess, I never thought that I'd go to all these Olympics and I'd have this life through sport, but I was really lucky to be able to um, have the opportunity, I think just through having a love and a passion for what I did and a lot of hard work and uh, people in my life that uh, surrounded me with believing in me. Um, so anything is really possible and I, I truly mean that if you have enough drive and enough uh, desire. All right, where do I keep all my medals? Hmm. Well, ironically, not here uh, at the moment. <laughs> so, um, no, they, I, I usually my medals hang out uh, in my house, but uh, they're in a box now um, because I've been traveling between Calgary and Toronto. So they're actually um, in a box in Calgary waiting. And they sometimes uh, just kind of come with me in my backpack because I often am doing events and things like that. And uh, I have to... Uh, take my medals with me so they sit in a hockey sock there's they're not even in a fancy box if you could believe that I don't know is that weird maybe but anyway that's where they are okay let's see here uh, a pregame ritual hmm well I told you guys a little bit about my pregame rituals here's with my stick I always tape my stick before every practice and game I start from the back and I taped it from the front so it's pretty fast at taping my stick, so I put the tape on, I don't have any here, but I go So I would go, like I can do it pretty quick with really thick tape. So I liked the thick tape, not the thin tape. And then I would wax it so that there wasn't one piece of tape showing, it was just like a shine. And then I never had a knob on my stick. See, it's very flat. I like it, I like to be able to feel, uh, I used to have the like grippy thing where you braid it and you go around but I don't have that anymore. I didn't like that. And uh, I don't like it grip, the grippy grip. I like it to be um, smooth and slippery so that it can slide my bottom hand. But I know a lot of players like the grip, but um, I never liked it. This one has grip, but uh, it, was a, 
It was a batch that screwed up. So, and my flex is 75. I'm kind of wondering what you guys use. Let me know. Okay. Hmm. Let's see where we got here. So, I'm just checking out your questions. Cool, Linda. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Linda. Cool. Um, okay. Maybe I'm gonna show you guys another exercise, uh, and then I'll answer Braden's question. Um, what am I gonna show you guys? Hmm, an exercise. Ah, show you a, a, a fun four one. So again, here. This is, uh, grab this, this is a 25 pound plate, and again, you don't need to have a big plate like this. You just need something heavy. But one of the really important things about building hockey strength is to have a strong core. And it doesn't mean like the six pack of abs. What it means is core is kind of from here to the ground. And if you're strong through here, also through your back and through your legs and your hips. If you ever watch Sidney Crosby, he's so strong because he can be in this nice low position and his core is incredibly strong and nobody can knock him, knock him off the puck. It's because he's really, really strong in his core. His arms aren't really exceptionally strong, but his core and his legs are really strong. So with this weight, you're just going to grab it, you're going to make a figure eight with any kind of weight. So this one's 25, so a figure eight. You can hold it overhead and just tip straight side to side. There's another way you can do it. You can push in and out. And you can go up over the shoulder like this. So even though I don't play anymore, I still train every day. Uh, like I was playing, I guess. I just don't skate as much. And uh, I do lots of these exercises still myself. So it's a way for me to stay sane in these crazy times, especially with our lives being stronger than they are with COVID. So. Uh, okay. Now, Braden19, uh, what has surprised me about working with the Leafs and player development? That's a good question, Braden. Uh, Nothing's really surprised me. To be honest, I spent my whole life around the NHL, like since I, I started to kind of rise up in the, in the ranks of hockey. Um, what's been really impressive is how the Leafs take care of people. Um, the resources that we have with the Leafs, nothing, nothing goes um, untouched. You have everything you need to make a difference. The players have everything they need. They're, the facilities are amazing. If we had... Everything these players had playing for the national team, oh my goodness, it would, be, uh, it, would be a, it would have been nice, but it wouldn't have made a difference in the outcome. It just would have been nice. Um, yeah, but I think just, uh, I'm not surprised how great the people are. I'm always just really impressed and, and, and happy that uh, the people are really good and um, everybody pays attention to the little details. And I think that at that level, it can make a difference. So, um, and I guess nowadays, young players coming up are really developed fast and uh, they're very, very skilled. They might not actually know the game as well as you would think they do. That maybe is a bit of a surprise. You'd think at the NHL everybody's so smart and uh, it's not always the case. Um, in fact, a lot of pro players make the same mistakes as you guys out there. They just do it faster and stronger. So you're constantly saying the same things to professional players that you would say to kids in a, in a bit of a different way. So means that you can always grow and you can always get better. All right. What else you guys got here? Connor. What's up, Connor? Hope you're having a good day. Wave. Ms. Murps. Waving at you too. Who else on here? Lady Bass. Hey, Hockey 10. Nat Nitsitolis. Timmer J. Donnie Van R. All right. Nice to see all you guys on here and everybody else that's come on. Uh, how are you guys doing during COVID? Is everybody staying sane? Everybody doing okay? Did you guys have fun in the camp this week? What uh, were some of the best things that you enjoyed? And by the way, if you have any more questions, just throw them out. I'll show you guys some more exercises as well uh, along the way um, that, uh, that may help you in your hockey experience. Uh, but yeah. If you have any more questions, please, let's hear it. All right, no more questions at the moment. So let me show you another exercise. Uh, this is a good one for your strength for shooting. So let me just turn this a bit. 
Guys, sorry about that. We'll go back to the Kaiser. So again, my little band here. Take this off. Now I'm gonna put it around. I'm gonna take my stick. It's another rubber band. So you can get this anywhere. These rubber bands. It's nothing fancy. But I'm gonna hook it around my stick, double, so you don't smash yourself in the nose with it. And I kind of come nice and close, but I'm gonna work on my backhand, so with resistance, okay? Backhand with resistance. This is something that is really easy to do. This will really build your forearm strength, your core, and it forces you to look at my legs, how to use my legs, okay? So that's one way. And then the other way is to go forehand, shoot it. And if you do this, say, three times 10 each way, okay? Then, what happens is you take this off, you grab a real ball or a puck, and boom, they'll be flying, flying off your stick. Maybe right into the camera, just kidding. <laughs> so, those are some ways to develop your, your strength, and players do this all the time at the NHL level. Oh, you guys wanna see something cool? This is what my son got me. This is an iPod case. It, my nickname when I played for the national team was Chicken, and I can't really get into explaining. It's not, it was just a friend that made this up, that was one of my teammates. But you open this up, and you put your iPods in there. Isn't that funny? It's Chicken. So my son got this for me one day as a fun thing, and I uh, take it with me wherever I go, my little chicken, for good luck. Uh, Connor Finn, uh, yeah, shout out to Brandon. Hey, Brandon, how are you doing today? What's up, wherever you are? Where are you guys joining us from? Uh, people want to type in where they're tuning in from. I'm curious where you guys are from coast to coast, all over. Uh, what else we got? So, yeah, as you can see, I wear my iPods. I got my music going. I love um, Euro dance music. Is that weird? I'm not really into hip hop rap maybe some of it but um high energy music and stuff like that i really like another thing you guys got to get if you can these things are not hopefully but one of these swiss balls these are amazing i'll show you again i'll use the kaiser but you can do it with the band put the kaiser around the wall and you can do oh that goes sit-ups on the ball, and you can also go sideways over the ball. And then, if you're brave enough, you can get on here with your knees and stick handle, or you can stand on here. Don't try this at home, <laughs> but you could if there's a friend helping you and try to stick handle. All right. Uh, if I could be a pro athlete, Pro athlete in another sport, what would it be? Hmm. I think if I could do another sport, I would have chosen tennis. I love tennis. I have always loved tennis. And uh, when I was a kid, I would uh, pretend that I was Steffi Graf, who maybe some of you that are younger wouldn't know, but kind of like Bianca. But uh, she won a lot. Maybe more like Serena. Serena is like the new Steffi. And... Uh, holy cow, I would go to the backboard and I'd play tennis all day long. And I love it. I love badminton as well. Actually, we would practice badminton on the ice with the national team. We'd get uh, pylons and we'd get the rackets and the birdies and we'd do for footwork. It's a really great thing to practice. So, uh, yeah, definitely tennis. It's action, not golf. Boring for me, but, but definitely tennis. <laughs> uh, some of you are in Toronto, Cambridge. Nice. My favorite... Olympic memory, uh, Bronte. Um, wow, so many. Winning in Vancouver, in the, your home country, is a pretty cool thing. Uh, winning, uh, coming back from that 2 nothing deficit in Sochi was pretty awesome. And uh, I remember betting Alexander Ovechkin a Big Mac that Canada would beat the, uh, the Russians uh, both in Vancouver and Sochi, and I won both bets. <laughs> that was a good, that's a good memory. Every time I see him, I'm like, hey, you owe me a Big Mac. So, um, My favorite Olympic village to stay in, Brayden, was uh, it's a good question. 
Really good question. Well, actually, it was the Sydney, Australia village in the Summer Olympics because Summer Olympics is like a whole other thing. It's like a big party and very busy atmosphere um, as compared to a winter. But in the Winter Olympics, um, hmm. Vancouver's village was good. It was like, it was okay. Torino's was terrible. Uh, Sochi was really good. Yeah, it was a really good village. But I guess I'd probably have to say Vancouver, just given it was in Canada and you could walk out of the village and everybody was cheering for, for you as Canadians. And it was pretty awesome. So, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, did I play any other team sports? Uh, team sports, let me think. Um, hmm. Yeah, I played softball in the Olympics. And... Um, played basketball and all the high school sports. So yeah, played several team sports. And then of course I loved uh, tennis and I swam as well when I was a kid. So I think it's really important for you guys as young kids to play lots of different sports. Definitely be active and um, try, try lots of things. You never know, you might think you're a hockey player and then you go out and play basketball and you like it more. And uh, it's never a bad thing to expose yourself to uh, all sorts of different sports. So yeah, definitely do that. Um, okay, well, what can I show you guys? Maybe one more, uh, one more exercise. Uh, maybe I should show you guys a balance exercise because I haven't shown a balance one yet. So I'll show a balance one and then we'll see if there's any more questions and I'll shut it down. So you need to find something. So I'm doing all of these exercises for you guys so that you can find uh, stuff at home. So imagine this is maybe a pillow or something that's unstable. This is a bit of a, it's like a foam pad. It's not that unstable. But what you're going to do is you're going to stand on it, maybe a couple pillows. Okay. You can grab your stick and you're going to stand on one foot. You're going to stick handle the ball or the puck around your body forward to the side and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Maybe it is more unstable than I thought. And then you're going to switch legs. Do that. And then you're going to close your eyes. Try to stick handle without trying to touch your foot down to the ground. Okay? And then, if you have the Swiss ball, you can try the same thing. If kneeling on the Swiss ball, stick handling. And then if you got really good, you could stand on it. So, then, with one more layer, back to the pillow, you get a friend and a partner. You close your eyes, stick out, and you get them to bump you, push you forward, backwards, from the side and you get really good because if you have good balance you'll be strong on your feet hard to knock off the puck and a force to be reckoned with there you go all right any further questions before i sign off here i gotta head back guys i gotta go back to psychiatry i'm in medical school and my rotation right now is psychiatry so we are very busy at the moment uh, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for having me on here today, Tim or Jay. And uh, thanks everybody for um, joining in. And uh, just want to wish you guys all the best during these crazy times. I want to tell you that no matter um, what the circumstances are for where you might play hockey or what's going to happen with school or where the hockey season is going to go um, or where life's going to take us, that there was a quote that I learned from my friend Paul Brandt, the country music singer, and he said, never waste a good crisis. And uh, this is a bit of a crisis that we've been in, isn't it? So one of the things with that is to never waste it, find the opportunities that exist. And so even though life isn't quite the way we thought it would be, in amongst all of this, there's always opportunities and there's always a way to move forward. And uh, for example, in medicine right now, if we can't be in the hospital as much, we spend time online, or finding creative ways to see patients from a distance, um, those types of things. For example, with the Toronto Maple Leafs, we're right now having a development camp, which is through Zoom, doing lots of things online for them, even though we can't have them in person. So there's still ways for you guys to always improve your skills. You don't need much space, as you saw here today. You can do it in your living room. You have outside, you have this beautiful country that we live in to go out and explore. So less time on the devices, more time outside, stay active, and we're going to get through this soon. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, thanks, Canadian Tire and Jumpstart, for putting this camp on for everyone. I hope you guys had an amazing time. See you guys. Bye.